Today on The Hookup, we're gonna build a simple Internet of Things weight sensor that you can use to measure things like how much propane is in your barbecue tank, CO2 is left in your keg, or with a little modification, you can even measure the amount of salt left in your water softener. The possibilities are endless. Oh, and we're gonna do it without coding and under $15. A couple of videos ago, I tested out some grilling accessories, and I was super disappointed that neither of the propane monitors that I tested worked, like, at all. In the end, I decided to just say screw it and build my own. Lots of you guys commented that you'd like to see a walkthrough so you could build your own, not just for monitoring propane levels, but also for kegs, CO2 tanks, steam irons, and basically anything else that changes mass as it depletes. So here it is. This video is sponsored by HolidayCoro.com, one of the largest light show vendors in America. And light show season is officially here. This may be your last week to get started if you hope to have a functional show by Christmas. And Holiday Coro has you covered with pre-built kits, including props, controllers, LEDs, and power supplies to give you that boost that you need to start your first show or maybe just level up your existing decorations. Check out Holiday Coro using the link down in the description to support this channel. To make this project, you're going to need an ESP8266 based node MCU, a set of four load cells, and an HX711 amplifier. Those parts are available on Amazon for under $15 or on AliExpress for significantly cheaper than that. Links to both are down in the description. Optionally, I used a set of DuPont crimpers to make my connections easier, but they aren't necessary. The basic concept behind this circuit is simple. A load cell is a piece of metal that can deform. And as it deforms, one side becomes slightly shorter and thicker, and the other becomes slightly longer and thinner. The short, thick side experiences a reduction in resistance, while the long side has an increase. By measuring the difference in the resistance of both sides, we can determine how much deformation is occurring, and therefore determine the load on the system. You could theoretically use a single load cell, but putting too much weight on that cell could cause it to permanently deform, which will then cause your sensor to become less accurate over time. Instead, we're going to use four load cells set up in a configuration called a Wheatstone Bridge to take some of the strain off of each of the load cells so they'll hopefully last a lot longer. You can get as fancy as you want with your mount, but I'm going to keep it super simple and use some scrap plywood that I've cut into a ring that can fit my propane tank. Then I'll mount my load cells equidistant from each other in the square configuration. The important thing to know about mounting your load cells is that they need to be able to deform, so you'll need to provide some sort of a cutout in the middle section that they can deflect into. There are a few 3D printed options, and I've got links to those down in the description, but if you want to skip the 3D printer entirely, there's no reason why you can't just drill out a few holes and then chisel out an indentation underneath each cell. You can mount your load cells with super glue, or optionally you can screw them in with some short pan head screws. Just make sure that the screw doesn't protrude lower than the load cell foot, or even worse, make sure it doesn't go through the scale into your propane tank. Next, you should label your load cells as 1, 2, 3, and 4 in a clockwise fashion. To make your Wheatstone bridge, you're going to connect the white wires of cell 1 and cell 2 and the white wires of cell 3 and cell 4. Then connect the black wires of cell 1 and cell 4 and the black wires of cell 2 and cell 3. At this point, I broke out my DuPont crimpers and attached some female headers to my four remaining red wires, and then I connected them to my HX711 amplifier. The amplifier is necessary because the difference in resistance in the load cells is actually going to be really small, so we need a purpose-built device with a better analog voltage resolution than you'd find in a normal microcontroller. We also want to keep the HX711 as close as possible to our load cells so we don't introduce noise or resistance into the circuit with our connecting wires. On the HX711, you'll connect the red wire of cell 1 to the A- terminal, cell 2 to the E- terminal, cell 3 to the A- terminal, and cell 4 to the E- terminal. Next, we just need to connect our HX711 amplifier to a Node MCU microcontroller and set up a program to monitor it. For this, we're going to use my personal favorite custom firmware, Tasmoda. And my current favorite method for installing Tasmoda is a program called Tasmatizer. Download Tasmatizer from the link in the description, right-click the file, and then hit Run as Administrator. In Tasmatizer, we're going to select Release under Image, and then choose Tasmoda Sensors.bin from the drop-down. Click on the Self-Resetting Device checkbox and plug your Node MCU into your computer's USB port. If you hit Refresh now, a new COM port should show up, and then you're ready to flash your device. So hit the Tasmatize button and let the program do the rest. After it finishes, you're going to send your Wi-Fi credentials and your MQTT information using the Send Config button. I like to specify a topic in this window, and then for this project, I'm going to make the topic Propane. 
After you've entered that information, the device will automatically reboot and then you can press the Get IP button to find your new device's IP address. Navigate to that IP address in your browser so you can get to the Tasmoda web UI where you need to set up your new sensor. Click on Configure and then Configure Module and select Generic, and that's probably going to cause your device to reboot. So you're going to repeat those steps to get back to the Configure Module screen where we can tell Tasmoda that we plan on attaching an HX711 load cell amplifier. We'll need to set up a clock pin and a data pin, and I like to use D1 and D2 in my projects because they don't cause any boot issues. So select D1 for your clock pin, or HX711SCK, and D2 for your data pin, or HX711DAT, and then hit save. Next, you're going to connect your Node MCU to your HX711 by connecting the ground to the ground, 3.3 volts on your Node MCU to VCC on the HX711, and then connect the clock pin to D1 and the data pin to D2. After that, you should see some data pop up in the Tasmoda web interface for your new scale, but it's probably not going to be right. Click on the console and grab something that you know the weight of. For instance, these water bottles contain 500 milliliters of water, which should have a mass of 500 grams. I also need to account for the weight of the plastic, so they probably weigh around 510 grams each. I like to use a little heavier weight for calibration, so I'm going to pick two bottles, which should have a mass of 1,020 grams. I'll calibrate my scale by typing in sensor 34 to 1,200, which is the calibrate command for the HX711 sensor, followed by the number of grams that it should be expecting. The console asks me to remove the weight, and then replace it, and then it will automatically calibrate itself. If you get an error in this step, the wiring in your load cells may have been reversed from the factory, and you can check it by typing in status 8, which should show you the raw value for the sensor. Putting things on the scale should make that value go up, and taking them off should make it go down. If it's the opposite, then you'll need to reverse your white and black wires, so every white connection that you made is instead a black connection, and vice versa. Once you're calibrated, the last thing to do is increase the frequency that your sensor reports the weight via MQTT by typing in teleperiod 20 to report every 20 seconds. And you'll also want to increase the resolution of the weight output by typing in weight res 3 to the Tasmoda console. Once you've done that, you can go back to your Tasmoda web interface and start weighing stuff. Pretty cool, right? Well, in my experience, sustained loads in Tasmoda sometimes do weird things like randomly zeroing the balance or changing the start value of the scale on its own. The good news is that Tasmoda also reports the raw reading or the non-zeroed reading from the HX711. So we can just use that to keep track of the weight. All you need to do is empty your scale and then type in status 8 in the Tasmoda console and then write down the raw weight value to use later. To add an MQTT sensor to Home Assistant, open your configuration.yaml file and under the sensor heading, specify a name and a state topic according to the topic that you put into Tasmatizer earlier. For me, it's Tele Propane Sensor. Since the topic reports a JSON output, we need to grab the specific attribute for the raw weight. So we'll put in a value template to grab the JSON attribute from our HX711 sensor, and then we just need to subtract the raw value of the scale that we wrote down earlier to calculate the number of grams on the scale. You can also specify the unit of measurement in this case is grams, and then you're all set. To set up a sensor that reports its percentage, you can use some standard values for propane tanks. I'm not sure if these are different internationally, but in the US, we use 17 pound or roughly 7,700 gram tanks that are filled with 20 pounds of propane, which is roughly equal to 9,070 grams. To do this calculation, we'll use another MQTT sensor with a value template that will first grab the raw weight and convert it into grams just like before, and then we'll take that value and subtract 7,070 grams, which is the weight of an empty propane tank, and that will give us the weight of just the propane. Then, we want to take that value and divide it by 9,070 grams, which is the maximum amount of liquid propane that will fit into one of these tanks, and then finally we need to multiply it by 100 to give us the percentage of propane left in the tank. For reference, here's a reading from my partially used propane tank, and then a new, never been used tank that I just bought from Home Depot. Once you've got those entries in your configuration.yaml file, you can restart Home Assistant and add them to the Lovelace dashboard using the Edit UI button. Next, you can make it as plain or fancy as you want using different card types. Once you've got these values in Home Assistant, you can also set up automations to do things like remind you to buy a new tank if the percentage drops below a certain amount, or alert you if the percentage drops a certain amount while you're away from the house or asleep, indicating that there might be a propane leak. If you've got a specific use case in mind other than a propane monitor, leave a comment down below to give everybody else some inspiration. 
If you've got questions about how to make your sensor or how to make it do what you want, feel free to leave a comment or come join us on the Hookup Home Automation Facebook group. Thank you to all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.